Ok, guys. So, so um, good afternoon, everybody. Let's start. So, you remember last time I received a question in this problem? I just wanna uh, wanna follow up on this question. Let's start. So, in this problem, you know, when we calculate I normal, you have to make you have to open the circuit this way as I get here between A and B, and then after you open the circuit this way, you have to make short circuit, and then you need to find the current here. So I need to find I need to find the current we have here. Okay. So <coughs> for sure, what we do, we use Kirchhoff current law, Kirchhoff voltage law, uh, Ohm's law. Also, we use a uh, current division, a uh, voltage division. Okay. We use the approaches I taught in chapter four about the three different techniques we used to, to analyze circuits. We can use all of that to calculate to calculate the current here. Okay. So I see. So uh, last time I told you, okay, we can assume we have a current here I, I1, whatever. And then we have here current I short circuit. We have current here this way, we have current this way, and then we have current this way. And I can analyze the circuit, the circuit this way. Okay, I can analyze the circuit. Um, so I received a question last time. Someone told me there is a short circuit here. Okay, so this current, all this current is gonna go this way, or and then I should because I told you if you remember, so I think the question was because of this short circuit, maybe I, I don't need all this part. I remove it because, because the short circuit, it was actually related to something I told before before the before the question. I told you if you have resistance and then you have a short you have a, you have short circuit this way, okay? So actually it's like you can set the it's like you can set the resistance. Why? Because all the current is gonna flow this way, okay? So this was uh, that's what I told. So why why is this not the case here? Why is this not the case? So my answer was yes. If you don't if you don't have the source, yes, the answer it would be the same thing. Okay. So if you don't have the source, it's actually it becomes like you have here six k ohms, and then you have your short circuit, and then you have here one circuit this way, which is three plus three, three, three plus three. So in this case, and we have only one source here. Okay. Listen to me. And then we have only one source here. In this case, all the current will go this way because this short circuit is gonna cancel the resistance here, okay? But this case is different because we have a source here, okay? This was my answer, it's correct answer. But I just wanna follow up a little bit on, uh, I, uh, on, on, on my answer. Actually, uh, you know, when I analyze the circuit, I can say, yeah, I have a current this way, and then this current will be divided by this way, and then this will come here, this will come here. I can assume any direction. It doesn't matter, I can assume any direction. And then after you do the calculation, you can see if you can put it, if your direction are correct or not. Okay. So actually, uh, related to what I said here, so actually what happens here is because because of this short circuit, all the current coming from here, all the current coming from is gonna come, come this way. It's not going to go this way. All the current that's uh, leaving this voltage source is going to come here, and then it's going to come to here. Okay. And also, but this is not enough. This current is not enough because actually this source will actually also send some color current. This current will be divided this way. So actually, I should circuit here has to receive two different types or uh, two two. Uh, Current from this source and another current from from this source. Okay, um, so and so the way you can I can I can try to send it. And here I'm not talking about how can you sort it because the way you can sort it you can just make equations, uh, get numbers and that's it. I just want you to understand even before I sort it. What do you expect? What should happen in case like this one? Okay. So what I should expect is that all the current coming from here, for sure, this is a short circuit to the ground. So everything will come here, nothing will come here. Okay. Uh, but it's not all the current because still we have current from here. This also coming, it's gonna be added, added here. Okay. So 
In order to understand this part better, we can look at superposition. You remember in superposition, I can make this circuit like two circuits. In one circuit, I will keep, I will keep this one, and then I'm gonna remove the other one. When I remove this one, this one becomes open circuit, this way, okay? And then I will find all the current coming from here. I'm gonna call it, for example, I1. So actually, I1 should equal six divided by six kilo ohm, which is one milliampere. So the contribution of this voltage source is actually one milliampere. For sure, nothing, nothing will come here this way because you short, short circuit here. You got what I'm saying? Nothing will come here. It's like you have short circuit, and then you have some resistance set. Everything will come here, okay? So, so the contribution, that's why all the, every current coming from you will, will, go through, will go through this branch, okay? Now, um, if you look at the second part of superposition, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep this one, but I'm gonna cancel this one, okay? So when I cancel it, this one, the voltage source becomes short circuit this way, and actually here in this case, look look at the circuit now, okay? Now the short circuit is gonna cancel this resistance because you need to short circuit over this resistance, okay? So any current coming from here, all this current will come through the short circuit. Nothing will go here, okay? Again, it's very simple, guys. Again, you have short circuit. Uh, sorry, you have a resistor. You make a short circuit. Everything will go through the short circuit. Very simple, okay? Uh, but what made confusion was time because we have a source here. But anyway, so, and then because this is three ki ki kilo ohm, three ki kilo ohm, so this current is gonna be come here and split equally, okay? Because this is current current division, current division theorem. If you have current source, and then I have two equal resistance, three ki kilo ohm and three kilo ohm, yeah. so th this current, which is two million there, is gonna be split equally. So what happens here is, when two, two milliampere, one milliampere is gonna come this way, and one, one milliampere is gonna come this way. So, so the contribution of the voltage source is one milliampere, and the contribution of the current source, the current source is one milliampere. And both of them are in the same direction. That's why the total is two milliampere, and that's what I got in the question, okay? Again, I don't want to confuse you, but I'm saying there are two, two points here, guys. number one. I want to remove the confusion about it if there is a short circuit, okay? They should cancel this part or not. So my answer is if, if there are only resistors, the answer is yes, okay? But if you have sources here, you cannot just simply exit. You cannot because I think that the question was, okay, or maybe this is something you get wrong, mis uh, misunderstanding, hopefully you don't, you understand it now and you don't do it. Someone can think, okay, look here, it's easy. This is a short circuit, so I'm gonna cancel this part, and then all the current will come this way, and the answer is one million here, okay? That's not true, because there is, you just ignore the impact of this one. If this one does not, if, if I don't have this source, but just a resistor, this is correct. You got the same. But anyway, I try to, I try to think about it. Uh, again, this has nothing to do with uh, how can you solve it, how can you simply just, as we explained this course, you just make the equation, you consume the equation, everything is okay. It's about how, how can you think about it? How can you try to even interpret the result? So actually, yes, all the current will come here this way, and the current here actually is gonna be split equally between this one and this one, okay? So that's why if you look at how when we calculated it, we find one million will come this way and one million will come this way, okay? Anyway, just a follow up about this one. Uh, yeah, always in learning, always, that's a, always in, in course and learning. When you learn something, you may apply it in a different case. Okay, that's why it gives you wrong results. Okay? Anyway, so let me, because we are gonna finish this chapter today. So in this chapter, guys, number one, I explain superposition theorem, okay, remember? So in superposition, I told you, if you have more than one source, two sources, Okay, and for example, I want to calculate the current here. You can you can keep one source and cancel the other one. Okay, and then you can calculate what is the current in, in, in this resistor. How oh, this is the contribution of this source to the current here. Then you have to do you have to do it again for the other source, and then you can put the current here. Okay, to, to get the contribution of the current here, and then you can add them together. 
okay? Uh, you, you add, so the final current here should equal this one plus this one, okay? For sure, because the direction is this way, you have to assume that direction is this way, Z. And then, based on the calculation, maybe both of them are going to be positive, negative, negative, positive, whatever it is. You just add them together and get a number. If the number is positive, so yes, the current will be here. If the number is negative, so it's in the opposite direction. So this was the first one I explained. The second one I explained and uh, here is, if you have a circuit this way, I can simplify the circuit by calculating what we call a definite or Norton uh, circuit, okay? So all this circuit is actually equivalent to just a resistance and voltage source. All this circuit is just equivalent to current source and resistance, okay? After that, the, the analysis of the circuit becomes very easy, very trivial, because all what I did, I just simplified the circuit. The circuit became so simple this way, okay? And then I explain how can you calculate V, v thevenin, how can you calculate R thevenin. Uh, luckily, R thevenin and Rn are equal. So if you calculate it one time, it should be enough because these two are equal. More importantly, or, or, or uh, before I say this one, so I also explain how can you get the v, v thevenin last time. I told you, you have to open here, you have to open, and then you have to calculate what we call VOC. VOC means V is a voltage across the open circuit. So once you open circuit here, I want to get the voltage here. This is V thevenin. Okay, so you, you have to use uh, the theorem I explained to you before to get the voltage here, and this should give you V thevenin. For I notebook, you have you have to open the circuit here, and then you have to make a short circuit, and then you need to find what current the current flow here, and this current I call it I short circuit. Okay. To calculate the resistance, to calculate the resistance, there are two ways. One way, which is a very strict, which is a general way. This is a general way. General means you can apply this way for any case. It is applicable for any case, okay? Here, in this case, you can just divide V thevenin by I naught in this way, or there is another case, uh, another way. But the other way here, it is used only if, if the circuit has only independent sources, there is no dependent source. So if the circuit has dependent sources, it's the only, only way you have. Okay? This one can, the other approach here can be used if the circuit has only independent source. In this case, when you open here, when you open here, you are gonna look here and see what, what is the equivalent resistance when you look here. After you cancel the sources. And again, what do you mean by cancel the sources? Any voltage source, short circuit. Any current source open circuit. Okay. And that's actually what I did here in this question. So, here what I did in this question, uh, we have here a voltage source. I made it short circuit, as I told you. Now I'm going to look, look from here and see what is the equivalent resistance here. So, if you look from here, what do you mean by look from here? What this means? It means if I connect a source, if I connect a battery here, what, what equivalent circuit it would see? Okay. So, I can see. This five and this ten are uh, parallel, and they are series with fifteen. Okay, for sure it's different if I look from here because if I, when I look from here, okay, it depends on if, if I look from here. For example, this one becomes series with these two if you make a short circuit. But anyway, that's a different case. But here I'm looking from here, okay, from the open circuit. I'm gonna look from here. I find this one series. So this is another approach. In this example, I calculate the resistance using this. Two approaches, okay, and we found they are the same, okay. Uh, one more thing I explained also last time, which is source transformation. Yeah, so source transformation means if your source, if the source is voltage source, okay, it has. It doesn't need to be definite. It may not be just a source. Be careful here because maybe maybe you are going to be confused here. So what I'm saying here, if you have this signal or signal, you you are you can this circuit is equal to this one. This one is equal to this one. But I'm very clear. It doesn't. It does not need to be different. It may be a source, a normal source. So if you have a voltage source, either it is definite or not definite. If you have a voltage source and you have a resistance, okay. Because as I told you before, any voltage source should have an internal resistance. Okay. So anyway, if there is a resistance this way, I can if you have this one, a source and the resistance this way, 
I can I can make it, I can convert it to a current source. Or if your circuit has a current source, I can make it a voltage source. Okay. But why? Again, sometimes guys, I have a I have a current source. If I can replace it by a voltage source, this can make the calculation easier. You got what I'm saying? So you, the, the, so you have the you have the capability to do that. Any current source, sorry, any voltage source, you can make a current source, any current source you can either it is Norton or Stephen or not. It is in general, okay? How can you do it? Yeah, this is easy. The resistance here, it becomes the same resistance here, okay? This current, the current here is actually V divided by R, okay? If you want to move from here to here, the resistance, this resistance equal to this resistance, the voltage is actually R times R. That's it, very easy, right? And so here in this example, I give you here, I can, I can for sure, if I want to analyze this circuit, still you can use the approaches I explained in chapter four, okay? But I'm looking for an easier techniques. So that it is easier techniques here, if I can replace this current, the current source and, and the parallel resistance here, if I can replace this one by, by a voltage source, now the circuit becomes too easy. That's what I did. So I'm going to remove this one here. I'm going to remove this one here, as you see, by just the resistance and, and voltage source. And then I can, these two sources are in series. So I can add or subtract them because of the way they are connected, this positive to negative. So this one should be added. So now look how the circuit became. Which circuit is easier? This one's the original one or this one? For sure, this one is very easy. You can just use it. So in general, any current source, you can make it voltage source. Any voltage source, you can make it a current source. Is that, is that okay? So I think one student asked me a question and maybe I want to share it with you because you may also be confused about it. So here, when I talked about Tiffany or Norton, I told you I, I'm, I'm going to make the circuit uh, voltage source and resistor. Or I can make it a current source and resistance. Okay. So what do you mean? You mean I'm gonna do both of them and which one I have to select? For sure. If if, I, if it is a question in test or in quiz, I will I will ask you do Norton or do do uh, do uh, Norton or Tiffany. But usually, uh, usually you are gonna use the one you are gonna use the one that is uh, that's gonna make your circuit easier. Okay, so yeah, I want to I want I want to calculate whatever here voltage whatever. If you think this one is going to be easier, you can just pick this one. If you want to, if you if you think Norton is easier for you, okay, you can do Norton. Yeah, you yeah, understand something. So so it can be either way, this one or this one. Okay, and I, I already explained. If you have this, if you have voltage and resistance, it's equivalent to current source and resistance. So in a way, so if it, regardless of this one or Norton, so if you have this one here, I can use this one. If you if you have uh, current source this way, I can make it go to source this way. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Um, I, I, again, guys, so actually, this is how this course is. Okay. In this course, to solve a problem in, th in Tiffany or Renault. I need to use chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, because everything is connected. Even for Tiffany, don't think, don't think this will be the end of Tiffany. In the future chapters, I also I will use it. This, this is how this course is. That's why it's very important to understand every theorem I talk because you are gonna keep using it. Yes. Which example? Yeah, this one here. I short set it. Yeah, the current here. Yeah, uh, so when you find the I, so you have the you didn't put the five on the sister, but you calculate the, the short circuit. Why uh, why is the five ohm resistor not included? Why is the five five ohm resistance is not what? Included. What? Is that like is so when you multiply by your I, is that basically accounting for it? Or? Okay, okay, wait a second. So again, there are different ways to calculate it. That's number one. Okay. So when I when I explain it in a certain way, don't tell me why you didn't do the other way. So there are different ways. Okay. And uh, but again, I think the easiest way to do it here. But again, it may be, it may be, it may be your way is different and it's still correct. But anyway, 
I think the easiest way, if I can calculate the total current I, and then this I, uh, I this I is going to be divided between these two uh, resistors. Because the 10 ohm and 15 ohm are in parallel. You got what I'm saying? So if I can find I, I can easily get this current, because this current is the same like the same current here in this branch, using current division. So current division is telling me, if you want to calculate the current in this branch, so it has to be the total I, Okay, times the other resistance divided by the submission of the two resistors. Okay, you 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 understand this one? Okay, and that's what I did here. So if I want to get I short circuit or I north node, I need uh, this is the total current multiplied by the other branch thing divided by the submission. Okay, so now the problem becomes how can I find I? How can I find the total total current from here? That's a problem now. So. Uh, to get the total current here, I can get the equivalent circuit. So here, so this circuit, because the equivalent circuit here, okay? And then once you get the equivalent circuit, the equivalent resistance here, so so actually here, as you see, uh, the, this five in series was 10 and 15. So if I want to get the equivalent resistance from here for this source, what is the equivalent resistance? It is five plus, Five plus fifteen parallel to ten. Okay, so this circuit becomes like you have a source, and then it's just connected to a resistance. This is the value of this resistance. How can you get the current getting out of the source in this case? It's just fifteen divided by the resistance. That's what I did. So this is fifteen divided by the equivalent resistance. This gives you the total current here. Okay, now someone. But again, there are different ways. Whatever, whatever you think is. It's it's uh, it's easier for you. It's okay as long as it's right. Okay. Okay. So the last thing we have in this chapter before before we move to the next chapter is actually what we call maximum power transfer theorem. Maximum power transfer theorem. Okay. Look here the idea here, guys. Here. Okay. If you have a voltage source V S, okay, and you have a resistance R S this way. And then I'm going to connect it to a resistance R, as you see here in this, in this picture. Okay? Both source, resistance, and another resistance here, R. Okay? If I ask you, what is the power we have here? What is the power we have here to, to this resistance? You know the power is I, I square R. Okay? So there are different, it can be V times I. It can be I square R, it can be V square divided by R, three, three ways to calculate it. But anyway, I will say I square R, I square R, okay? So, so now the question is, look here guys, when I change, when I change this resistance, the power, the power consumed here is gonna change. By changing the resistance, the power, by changing this resistance here, I'm not gonna change the, the RS or VS, okay? By changing this resistance, the amount of power here will be different, okay? So now I'm looking for the maximum power. What is the maximum power I can transfer to this source? Okay. This is something really uh, useful in many applications. If you have a speaker, for example, and I wanna, I wanna send the maximum power to the speaker or the maximum power to the circuit, whatever it is. So here, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna get the maximum power here. Okay, so what is the maximum power? What value for R, what value for R is gonna give me the maximum power, okay? Uh, first of all, you should understand the amount of power here consumed here, it depends on R. By changing R, the power changes, okay? And now, I'm looking for a way to find the maximum power. So all what I did, guys, as you see here, P, P is the power equal I square R, as you see here, and I, what is I, what is the current here? V is, divided by the summation of these two resistance, as you see here, this is I square. Now I have a formula here, P, P should equal R divided, this is, this is the amount of power consumed by R, okay? Now I wanna find what value for R that's gonna give me maximum V. What value, what value for this R, okay? I'm not gonna change R S, I'm not gonna change V S, I'm gonna just change R. What is the maximum value for R that can give me maximum P? You know, from, uh, from calculus, to solve this problem, you need to differentiate. And that's what I did. 
So I'm going to differentiate this equation with respect to R, and then I'm going to say it's equal to zero. I'm going to have to solve it to find R that can give me maximum P, okay? So that's what I did. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to ask you in any exam to do this derivation, but I just want to, I'm going to give you the final answer, and that's what you need to care about it. But I just, uh, I need, you, uh, I need, I have to explain how, how I got, how I got this final answer. Anyway, so I did differentiation, and then I'm going to say equal to zero, and then I'm going to do some um, uh, algebra manipulation here, and then I, at the end, I found R equal to RS. So when this resistance equal to this resistance, this is this is where I will get the maximum power. Is that okay? So when R, so if you have a circuit like this one, voltage source and resistance, when this resistance equal to this resistance, you will get the maximum power. If this resistance anything else, it's not going to be the maximum power. Okay, so that's what you need to know. So what you need to know, if you want to calculate, uh, you don't need to care about our about the derivation here. No, I will not ask you to do this derivation, but this is the proof. If you wanna, if you wanna get the maximum power here, this R should equal to RS. Okay. What is okay? So what is the value of the power now, which is the maximum power? Thank okay, you. I can return to this formula again. I can replace R by by RS. I can replace R by RS. If I do that. The maximum power becomes Vs squared divided by 4Rs. That's, so all what, we, all what I need from this slide is, number one, you need to understand that the, the maximum power here depends on the value of R. By changing R, the power consumed will change. That's number one. Number two, I, I, I'm going I'm to, uh, we're going to, uh, this resistance is going to consume the maximum power with this R equal to Rs. Is number two. Number three, the maximum power here in this case is actually Vs squared divided by 4Rs. Okay. Any questions? Okay. I just want to give you a curve here just to understand what I'm talking about here. This is the ratio between Rn and Rt. Okay. Sorry, because I got this one from the book, so from the textbook. That's why I just used the different different terms here or different names. This one is RT, here is RS. It's not a big deal. This is R, I'm gonna put it RA. Okay. So here, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, we are gonna draw here the relation between RL and RT, okay, and between P and P maximum. Okay. And as you see here, you, you can see from this curve when, when RL when this R equal to RT, when these two resistance are equal, okay. This is where maximum power can be obtained. If, if the resistance is less than that, I, I, I'm going to get, um, we are going to get this power. If it is more than that, we are going to take also this power. Is that OK? Any questions? Conclusion, before I go to this example, conclusion. If you have a circuit like this one, I'm very clear. If you have a circuit like this one, you have voltage source, you have resistance, and then you connect it to resistance. Another resistance here. If you want this resistance to get the maximum power, okay? So this resistance has to, has to be equal to RS. That's number one. Number two, the power here, the maximum power is equal to the S squared divided by four RS. Is number two. Let me ask you a question. So I'm very specific. I'm talking about, I'm saying this, what I, what I explained this slide for this circuit. What about, what about if I give you a circuit that is different? It doesn't look like this circuit. You have different branches, you have resistance, you have, uh, you have three, four sources, whatever, something different, okay? Very simple. All what I have to do, I have to get the equivalent definite circuit. So this part, this part here can be, can be coming from different. You understand what I'm saying? If I do that, the circuit I will get, it will be similar to this case, and then I can use these results. Okay, guys, I'm very clear. What I'm saying is, what I'm explaining here in this slide is just for, only for this case. When the circuit looks like this circuit, what to source, the resistance and the resistance. If anything is, please don't apply, don't apply this slide, okay? If anything is, you have to make the circuit look like this one. Hell, that's what I'm gonna show you the example, but it's a easy, it's a very easy thing you can do just using different. So here I can use, this is V-thevenin or thevenin. And so I think that's what I did in the next example, okay? So 
for example, here, or you can do thickening, or you can do transformation. You can, at the end, so whatever whatever you do, at the end, I have I, I need I need to have a simple transistor. Okay, so whatever whatever you do, okay, so like you can, if you want to take thickening, it's okay. If you want to uh, do like in this example here, we are gonna do uh, a source of transformation. Anyway, so let's what I did here. I want to find in this question I'm asking you what is the value of R. That gives me the maximum power transfer. What is the value of R? Okay. For sure, <laughs> this circuit is different from this circuit. So I can't I can't use this one. So so I have, and this is the only 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 option I have. Okay. So you, you need to think, you need to think how how to make the circuit I have to be similar to this one. Okay. So again, Tiffany is one of the solutions, but here in this case, maybe I have a bit of an easier solution. You know, I have here a current source and the resistance. So I can replace, you know, this is a current source and resist. I can replace it by resistance. Okay, I think it's here. Yeah. So here you have current source and resistance. I can replace it by voltage source and resistance. If you have current source, you can replace it to uh, voltage source. If you have voltage source and you need to convert it to current source, you can do that. Now, I, now if 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 I can if I can convert this one here to voltage source and resistance, now the problem becomes much easier. Okay, so now the question: How how can you convert this current source to voltage source? Very easy. This resistance equal to this resistance. Very easy. The voltage is actually I times R. That's it. So now this circuit becomes like this one. Where with this part, with this part here, guys, this part here, it became this part here. Okay. Now, these two resistance are in series, so I can add them together to 15. Now, I just did manipulation to the original circuit, so that it looks like, it looks like this circuit here. Once I make it, once I make it looks like this circuit, okay? So, so now I can calculate maximum power, okay? I, okay. So again, if, if the circuit is something else, is something different from this case, something else, you can use Tiffany. Okay, if you use, if you use uh, uh, Tiffany, Tiffany is going to give you R and, and voltage source. Okay. Anyway, so now, uh, now if I ask you, okay, if this, if, so now this circuit is equivalent to this one. Okay. So if I ask you, what is the value of R that can maximize the power transfer very easy now? It becomes R should equal to 15. That's it. R equal to 50. Also, if I ask you, what is the maximum power? You have the formula here. Vs squared divided by 4s. Okay, so Vs 50 squared divided by 4. Uh, yeah, Vs squared divided by 4s. This one. So this is the, the power transfer, and this is the maximum. Any questions? Yes, sure. When you converted the um, current source to a voltage source. Yes. Does it have to be uh, the first resistor has to be parallel with it and changing it to series? Is that the only situation where that works? Yes. So let me let me go back to here. So it's a very good point. So it's very clear. Look here. Where would would the source series with a current source? I can make it this way. Or if you have current source with a resistance in parallel this way, I can make it this way. So this is my case. I'm here, I'm here. I want to move to here. How can you do that? Yeah, this is easy. So I need to get R and V. R is equal to the same R I have here. Okay, V equal I times R. If you have this one, you can get this one. If you have this one, you can get this one. Is that okay? okay? And they are equivalent. They are the same thing. They have the same impact on the circuit. That's the most important thing. Any questions? Okay. By the way, before I forget the test, uh, test one, Will be on March 7th, 7th. Okay, this will be the last day, and uh, before the parade, I will send you email about what exact exact topic you can. But it, it should cover, it should cover chapters one to five. But I'm gonna also send you the exact things you need. You need, although it may be difficult to tell you, that, but but I will try to tell you how how it looks like in, in a separate email. But it will be March 7th. Okay? Uh, any questions so far? Yeah, sure. So when you're 
changing the current source and the parallel resistor to a voltage yes. source is the voltage the current times the resistor. Yeah, let me let me come here. Because I'm mixing. Yeah, look here. Yeah. So here, BTH is what? I N R N. I N R N. If you move from here to here, yes. Okay. Okay, guys, so let's start let's start chapter six. Uh, so um the reason I mean this one one to five because somehow one to five somehow related to each other. I want to make this two is going to be related to chapter six and seven because six and seven somehow also related to each other. Okay? So, so it's going to be quick. <laughs> okay, maybe two, two weeks or three weeks after one, I'm going to do two. But anyway, uh, but it's, it's going to cover two chapters, six and seven, because they have the other. So here, I like this topic, by the way. It's a very interesting topic. So here, in this chapter, what we have done before in previous chapters, we had we analyze circuit. So this is the purpose of this course so far. Everything I did, how can we analyze the circuit? Okay. But the circuits we analyze, they have current source, voltage source, and resistor. These are the elements we have we, we had in the circuit so far. Is that okay? So all the circuit we analyze until now, all of them had current source, voltage source, and resistor. That's all. Is that okay? The purpose of this chapter is to learn if we are going to introduce a new circuit element, we call it operational amplifier, operational amplifier or op amp. Sometimes we call it op, op amp. Op amp is, is operational amplifier, okay? So I'm going to teach, uh, this is, as, as you will see, this is a chip, very famous chip, um, an IC integrated circuit. This chip is used in too many things, okay? So I'm gonna use it like an element, like a resistor or element, element in the circuit. So I'm gonna teach, in this chapter I'm gonna teach, if the circuit has this element, how can I analyze the circuit? This is a new, new stuff I'm gonna teach in this, in this chapter and also next chapter. Okay guys? This will be different from what I took before, okay? So still, still we're gonna have resistors, still we're gonna have voltage sources, current sources, on top of that, we're gonna have this op amp, operational amplifier, okay? Um, I'm gonna. I wanna. I wanna explain to you several things before. Before it's it's very easy to if you understand it. Uh, so let's start with amplifier. So in in electronics, um, what do you mean by amplifier? Okay. Usually, I'm I'm sure, I'm sure maybe most of you don't have, don't have background in electronics, which is totally fine. So this is a transistor. One way to use transistor is uh, one way to use them like amplifier. Amplifier. So what amplifier means? I'm gonna tell you what it means. Okay. So for example, here maybe I want to give you some some background before we go for uh, op amp because op amp you can take from the name amplifier. So it's amplifier, right? So anyway. So for example, here I put for example some 10 volt or something like that. We call it VCC. And then I'm gonna get the output from here, and then I'm gonna input the input here. Okay. So one way to use transistors is a transistor. One way to use a transistor to use a transistor as amplifier to amplify. Okay. So what happens here actually is if you have here very small signal, very small signal this way, I can get the same signal here, but inverted. So I so you got everything. So I'm gonna get the same signal here inverted. Okay. So it's amplification because the same thing is because this signal here is the same signal here. It's the same signal. It's amplification. But we have two types of amplification. We have inverting amplification and we have non-inverting. And that's what I'm gonna talk in details. Okay. So again, you have amplifier. The word amplifier means we we ampl we amplify the voltage. So if I have a small voltage here, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna get here if I get this voltage th this way. Look here, it's in phase. Both of them are in phase. So in this case, we we'll call it non-inverted. So yes, it's amplified because I'm gonna amplify it. But okay, amplify the voltage. But we have two types: inverting and non-inverting. Inverting means 
It's like you have line by meter to front, as you see here. So here, if you have a signal this way, and then you amplify this way, or you can amplify this way. If, if this is the case, you amplify and also you multiply by negative one. So this one is called inverted. Okay? This one is called non inverted So now, uh, and number one, you know what I mean by amplifying. I'm amplifying if I have a small signal, I'm gonna make it big signal. This is number one, okay? Number two, you know what I mean by inverting and non-inverting amplification. Okay, so both of them are um, um, amplify the, the signal, but one of them is going to be in phase, the other one will be out of phase. So when this one positive, this part is negative. When this one negative, this one is, is positive. It's like you multiply by negative one. Okay, it's like for example, V out equal 10 V input. Amplification, right? Or V out equal negative 10 V input. This is the amount of amplification I get. 10 and 10. So negative here doesn't mean I'm going to make it small. It doesn't mean. So first of all, negative, that means it's going to be in phase, something like that, or something like that. As long as, long as, as, long as the value here, the absolute value is greater than one, you amplify amplification, OK? So this is one thing you should know. Uh, there is another thing here I want you to understand. In case of transistors, if you have transistors, okay, here, here I connect like AC circuit here at the output. I'm gonna get also AC circuit amplified, amplified. Is that is that okay? But listen to me. Uh, transistors. Cannot work only using EC, EC, EC. Okay. You need also to connect here this DC voltage. We'll call it bias. For sure, I'm not going to go to the details. But what I'm saying is to make the transistor work, or for, for the transistor to work, you have to connect the DC voltage. We call it a bias. Without without this bias, okay, or without this DC voltage, it's not gonna work. Once once I bias it, once once I input the uh, DC voltage here for, for it to work, now I can input uh, uh, AC. I will get AC. But if there is no bias, it's not gonna work. Okay, without going too much details. But this is how 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 uh, how transistors work or any how in, any integrated circuit usually because most. Most of the integrated circuits are, are made of transistors. That's why, um, if you have, I'm not sure, maybe, I think most of you didn't use the integrated circuits before, but for any chip, for any chip, always you have something you call, this is a bias. For example, it can put zero and five volt, or sometimes it depends for sure on the data sheet. Sometimes you put 10 volt and negative 10 volt. This is DC. You need, you need to bias it. I need to input DC. This DC, so only to help the transistor to work. You get what I'm saying? But it's not the input. It's not the input. This is something just to make the transistor work. And then after that, I can input signal. I'm going to get a signal, something like that. Is that OK, guys? So conclusion is, for any IC, for any transistor, there is some DC. There is some DC with input. This DC, we call it bias. Is that OK? One more thing. If, uh, if if the bias, for example, 10 volt, that means, for example, just 10 volt, that means the output voltage here has to be less than or equal 10 volt. There is no way to get a voltage here that's greater than the bias. If the bias you have here is, is 10 volt, there is no way to get something greater than 10 volt. Is that okay? So what happens is that if I multiply this is the input, if I multiply the output, the output should equal A, which is again, the gain 10, 20, 100, whatever it is, times the input. What if the this multiplication should reduce something like 15 volt? What's gonna happen? You understand what I'm saying? So again, I'm very clear. When when the bias, for example, is 10 volt, that means that the output cannot be more than 10 volt. 
In this case, you are going to get a distorted signal. So what happens here is you are going to get a signal this way, but because the output cannot be more than 10 volt, so it's going to be distorted. So the output will be distorted this way. Okay. So you should understand, guys, for any for or for um, for amplifiers, the output cannot be greater than the bias. Okay. If if after you do the math, after you multiply the gain by the input. If the, if the result should be greater than 10, okay, so actually at 10, it will be saturated at 10. Like to stop, that's why I have to make sure if I want to use it correctly, I have to make sure V input cannot be big, very big. Otherwise, if the V, v input is too big, it's the output will be distorted. So there is the output cannot be cannot be greater than the bias, the value of the bias voltage you input here. Any questions? <laughs> Okay, guys, any question? Um, by the way, this one should be negative as well. If, if you want to get positive and negative, so this one has to be negative. But anyway, uh, this is some little bit some background. I we need it here. So let's. So here, this is a four, uh, eight eight pin uh, uh, integrated circuit. Okay, it's uh, seven hundred. This is the number of it. Seven hundred forty one. It has eight pins, as you see here. Uh, if you look, this is a very nice, uh, how, this is how it is made. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this, so two mini transistors, but don't worry, I'm not gonna, well, not, we don't care about how it is made. Okay. It's very easy to win, but I just want to show you how it looks like from inside, how it is made. It has two mini transistors this way. Okay. Uh, but for sure, uh, because if, uh, I'm gonna just explain what are the main character or uh, characteristic of this element, your visa analysis is very easy. But anyway, but so this is how it should look like from this side. So let, let's look at here. So here, I'm going to make a symbol for all of this. I'm going to make a symbol. The symbol is tri tri triangle. So we use a triangle, as you see here, we use a triangle as a symbol for OM, as you see here. Okay. And actually, here, bin number two and bin number three, we, we, it has two inputs. One here negative and one is positive. Okay, so this is a symbol I'm going to use for for this circuit. Okay, so it has here one input. We call it inverting input. Inverting input because it's for nickel to a negative. We have here another input which is bin number three. We call it non-inverting input. So if you look here in this circuit, this is number three, number two. So these are the two inputs we have here. But anyway, again, don't worry. We're not gonna we're not gonna teach you this one. But anyway, I just want what you. Should, to learn how it looks like from inside. But anyway, so here we have here one input here, uh, two inputs, number two and three. I'm gonna explain how it works. We have one output here, which is bin number six. This is the output. If I come here, yeah, this is the output, bin number six. The output is taken from here. And then we have bin number seven and bin number four. This is the bias, because we have transistor. This transistor cannot work without a bias. So you can see here we are connected, we're connecting so here we V plus V negative. So here, as you see here, you need to connect to the bias, the DC voltage. This, this is the bias just to make it work. Okay, it's not the input. Input is different from bias. Same thing for, for transistors. Bias is a DC voltage you need you need to in order to make the transistor work. Okay, this, this is not the input. And then once it is working, once you once you connect to the bias, now you you can apply an input. Okay? Anyway, so it's the same thing here. We have a bias here. This bias is bin number four and bin number seven. For example, this can be negative 15 and this one can be positive 15. Is that okay? Does that mean what it means? For sure, this number may change. By, by the way, 15, negative 15 may change. It depends on the chip. So here, I just give you one example 15 and negative 15. So if you buy a chip, you have if you buy a chip, you have to uh, you have to look at the data sheet to see what is the bias. Okay. Anyway, so in this case, the bias is 15 and negative 15. What it means, based on what I, I have just talked right now, it means the output here cannot be more than 15 or cannot be less than negative 15. Because as I told you, even it's the same thing in transistor, the output cannot be greater than the bias. So the maximum output you can get should be between 15 and negative 15. 
if the output is greater than 15, if the output is greater than 15, it's going to be saturated. But because it cannot produce voltage that is greater than 15. Make sense? Okay. Okay. So now, so the way the way you are going to use it in, in circuits, well, I'm going to use it this way. Okay. The symbol, as you see here in this symbol, I'm going to put negative and positive. We have two inputs. Two inputs here. One is negative, one is positive. Okay, and uh, this the negative one is called inverting input, the positive one is called non inverting input. We have output, and also we have bias here. We have the uh, we have the bias here. Sometimes, or actually, not sometimes, most of the time, we just remove remove the bias here. We make it this way. Listen to me because this is an important thing. Look at that. Sometimes, just to make it easy, just I use the symbol this way. I just ignore, ignore the bias. But does it mean it does not have a bias? Simply, it does not have a bias, it's not going to work. Very simple, okay? But just to make it simple, because just to make it simple in calculation, then to show it has a, and also the, even the bias, it has nothing to do uh, with, with the analysis of the circuit somehow, okay? What I mean is, uh, I have input, I have output. So the bias, uh, I'm not, <laughs> it's not the input. Just the bias is DC voltage that can make it work. That's it, okay? So that's why, I'm gonna use the same book this way. So, okay guys, so here, also, also in this diagram, we have only three, three pins, but actually we have more than that, but just to ignore the bias, okay? Uh, as you see here, when I connect the bias, I have to make sure this one is positive. I have to make sure this one is negative. So if you have a photo source, I'm gonna connect it this way, okay? So that this is zero, this is negative. This is zero, this is positive. This one has to be positive, this one has to be negative. Okay. Uh, okay. So now, uh, now, okay, let me make it very simple now. So now, I have a circuit. I'm, I'm, this is the symbol one I use for open and guys. This is the output. Okay, and I have two inputs. This is negative, positive, okay? So this one is called inverting input. This one is called invert, non-inverting, non-inverting input, okay? Okay, this is amplifier, by the way. So I should do this amplifier. So the output, which is the voltage here, should equal gain, gain, because amplifier, okay? Gain times V input. And V input is actually the difference here. The difference here is V input. Okay. So V output is a relation. V output, V output should be equal again, again, times V input. It's amplifier. Okay. But there are, there are several things here, guys. Okay. Actually, keep in mind, I'm not going to use it this way for amplification. I'm not going to use it this way for amplification. Why? Simply because the gain is too hard. Too hard. So, okay? 10 to the bar, 10 to the bar of 5. Too much gain. Okay? Is that okay? What's, it's good. You have too high gain. Is that a good thing? It's not a bad thing. No, it's a bad thing. You know why? Because even if the input is very, very small, this one will be saturated. Remember, we, we, we have a limit, it's gonna be saturated. We have a, we have a bias here, positive 15 and negative 15. You cannot get output more than positive 15 and negative 15. That means this, this input has to be very, very small. The input here has to be very, very small, okay? That's why, that's why, if, as, as you will see here in this course, if I want to use the open amplification, I'm not going to use it this way. I will try to do this to make it more practical. Because the gain, the original gain here is too high. Okay? So I'm going to assume it's infinity, as you will see shortly. But anyway, so now, okay, so to make it simple, guys, to, if, you, if I want to use this open, okay. Number one, you need to limit the characteristic of the open. So I'm going to look at it like an element. 
like a resistance, similar to a resistance. When, when I teach a resistance, I told you, in a resistance, V equal I R. Same thing. So I don't care about how it is made inside it, okay? Uh, but I'm going to look at it, what the characteristic. So what are the characteristics I need to know? Okay, okay, number one. I1, the current here, I1, equal to I2, equal to zero. The current here, there is a current, but this current is very, very small, I'm going to say it's zero. Okay. Simply because if you go to the reason for that, again, you guys, what I'm saying is that it's too simple to if you understand it. So let me do what I say. You need to understand what are the characteristics of this element, okay? When I connect it to a circuit, what are the characteristics? And then I can use the characteristics to do the analysis. That's it. You will find this very easy. But if I go back here, you will see, because the input current here is input to the base of transistor. Input current is going to the base of transistor. And it's when you teach, when you learn electronics, you will, you will know that the, the base current, the, this is what the base. So the base current is a very small current. So here, that's why I'm going to assume it's actually, it is not zero. Listen to me. It's not zero, but it's very, very small. Okay. Uh, one more thing here. I output, I cannot ignore I output. Okay. So there is a current coming out from here. Current co coming out from here. Okay. The other thing you should learn here, and that's what we're going to use. Actually, the input has to be very, very small because I told you for a very small input, the output will be very high. So the input should be very, very, very small because the gain is too hard. What it means? It means V1 should equal to V2. Okay? It's, not, it's not exactly equal. There's a small difference, but I'm going to say equal. Okay? So the main two things is I have, I have to consider when I, am, when I analyze a circuit that has an open, number one, current here is zero. I can ignore this current. Current enter here is zero. I can ignore it. That's number one. Number two, the voltage here equal to the voltage here. Okay. I can't ignore the output current. Please don't be the input, not the output. Okay. So there's some current here. It may be zero by accident, but, but normally I can't ignore it. Okay. So that's a different story. So let me go here to see. Okay. So um, as I told you here, guys. Number one, V input is actually V1 minus V2, the input here, V1 minus V2. This V input is actually very small, very small, because the, amp the amp amplification is too high. So anyway, so always we are gonna say V1 equal to V2, the two voltages are equal. Number two, I1 and I2, I1 here and I2 should equal to zero. Very important. Guys, it's very simple. Number one, you need to learn what are the characteristics of the op amp? And then when I analyze the circuit, I will use this characteristic. I have, I have an element. I don't care how you read this element. But I know that for this element, the current is equal to zero. I know V1 equal to V2. Because I, because I would say. Also, I know the output voltage cannot be, cannot be more than the bias. If the bias is 15, I can't get, I can't get here output that's more than 15. So here now, uh, based on what I took here now, I'm getting. To, we have two types. We have um, to, ana to analyze to, to analyze the open. We have a practical circuit and we have an ideal circuit. Ideal circuit. Okay? The pra practical circuit. I can say this open. This open, this circuit is actually equivalent to a circuit like this one. Here. This is a practical one. Okay. So here we have input here. We have a resistance here at the input. Okay. So this is a, it's like you have a resistance here at the input here. This resistance is too hard. That's why the current is almost zero. It's too, very high resistance. Practically, this resistance may be 10 to the power 5 or 10 to the power 12. This is very high resistance. Okay. So here, this is this is the practical representation of this open. That means. That means if you have an op amp in a circuit, I can remove the op amp and replace it by this circuit. That's the meaning of it. Because this is the motive. This is a motive. Okay? So now if you have an op amp, I can remove it and put the equivalent circuit because this is like an equivalent circuit. This is how it works. So the operation of it, I can represent it using this one. Okay? 
So it is the input here is connected to very high resistance. It's between 10 to the power 5 or 10 to the power 12. This is very big numbers. Also, the output here, we have R output here. Okay. Output here, R output. And then here we have dependent source. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, this is a dependent source. This dependent source is the amplification times VI. VI is the difference in the input here. Difference here. Okay. This amplification also is too high. 10 to the power 5. Okay. Also, the resistance here around is very small, one ohm. Okay, so again, make it very simple. Okay, so this is actually the practical model. Most of the time, I'm not going to use the practical model. Most of the time, I'm going to use the ideal model. Why? Because the ideal model is going to give a number one. It's easy in analysis. So when you do analysis, it's going to make the problem very easy. Number one. Number two, it will give you result. That's not, it's not 100% accurate, but it's going to be very close to the practical, practical one. That's why in the whole chapter, in the whole chapter, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to use this practical one, unless in the last example. In the last example, I want to convince you how the ideal is very close. So I'm going to do the calculation using the ideal. I'm going to do the calculation using the real or the practical or uh, but the real, real one, I will show you how, how the numbers are very close to each other. Okay, but the, but the analysis using this one is too more complicated. So, I, so I'm, I'm going to complicate it just to, to get uh, just 0 0.001 uh, increase in the voltage. You understand what I'm saying? So very little uh, accuracy. Okay. So again, if you have this open end, this is how practically it should, it should be. So practically, you have to replace it and you, with, with this one. I, ideally, the way we are going to do, do it, ideally, yeah, this is how, how we are going to do it, ideally, guys. Number one, I will assume the input resistance here is infinity. In, in, practically, it is actually 10 to the, to the power of 5. Because the input, the input resistance infinity is currently zero. Here the current is not zero, but very close to zero because the resistance is very big resistance. But if I mix this resistance infinity, like open circuit, the current will equal to zero. Okay? And this is not accurate. Uh, but that's okay. The error is very, very small, as I, I will prove to you at the end of this shot. Okay? Also, I'm going to assume our out is zero. This resistance is zero. That's okay, because this resistance, you want to make it zero. Practically, it's one ohm. <laughs> one ohm is a very small value. One ohm is a very small value. So one ohm or zero, the error is very small. Anyway, also, uh, I will assume that amplification is infinity. AV is infinity. In practically, it's actually 10 to the power 5. It's 10, to 10 to the power 5 is a big number. Uh, practically, I'm going to assume v, v input equal to 0, or V1 equal to V2. So the voltage shield equal to the voltage shield. Actually, it's not equal. They are very close. Okay, But I'm going to assume it's equal, not very close. OK, so to make this lecture guys, what I'm saying, I'm, I'm going to do this time, but for now, for now. You use the op amp, there are two models I can use. One model. It's, it's, actually, it's actually one model, this model here. However, this, this model it has uh, practical numbers here. Okay? But I'm not gonna use these practical numbers just to make the calculation easier. I'm gonna I'm gonna use this these numbers here, which is the input resistance infinity. That's why the current here is zero. Okay. Uh, R output here is zero. Uh, also, the input is zero, so the voltage here is zero. Okay, I will use this ideal, ideal model. This is the ideal model. Okay, I will use it in the whole chapter, and most of the people use it. In the last example, I will, I will use the ideal model, and I will use this model as well, the real model, and I will show the error is very small error. Okay, the, uh, so the error is very small, but you have to do more, or you have, you are going to make it more complicated to analyze the circuit. Is that okay? Okay, I think that's enough for today.